Hey guys, Frank Cox here, the Barbecue Pit Engineer. Uh, this is the Smoker Builder Podcast, and on today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about, let's see, about when to add wood to your smoker uh, when you're cooking on an offset. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Frank Cox here. I'm back. Like I said, this is the Smoker Builder Podcast, and today I'm trying something a little bit different. I'm on my way down uh, to get some more barrels. I'm pulling the trailer, and I've got a lot of drive time ahead of me. So I figured I would do a podcast in the truck this time. However, I decided to wear my AirPods, so hopefully this uh, audio sounds a little better. Let me know what you think in the comments on whatever platform you're listening to. By the way... If you're listening to the podcast and you want to watch this episode, you can watch me wave my arms, drink coffee while I'm driving uh, over on YouTube and stuff. But uh, if you're not wanting to watch me wave my arms and drink coffee and you'd rather just listen to me, you can catch it on all podcast platforms. Well, anyway, let's get right on into it here. So what we're going to talk about today is when you should add wood to your smoker, like if you're cooking on an offset smoker. And, you know, we could actually cover other kinds of smokers at the same time with this, but this is primarily going to be focused around offsets. And uh, I guess the reason I'm talking about this is because I've seen a lot of different questions lately on some of the Facebook groups I follow. I'm in quite a few Facebook groups. I just don't really comment too much because I don't want to derail the train in somebody's Facebook group, you know. But I do watch and see everybody's comments and questions, especially on the cooking groups. And I noticed that there's a few guys that are like trying to get rid of that white smoke or that little brief bit of blue smoke, like heavy blue smoke, when they add a uh, log to their firebox during a cook. And this is primarily on cheaper offsets. So I figured that's when I would kind of focus this on. Now... You know, as we've said in previous podcasts, you know, wood, you can't just like, it just doesn't light right away. You got to have a good coal bed. And that good coal bed is responsible for the primary source of heat, which is where the BTU capacity comes from for your cooker. Now, the wood, like let's say that you just take a, a stick off the shelf that's sitting outside of the cooker. It's sitting on a shelf in the garage, whatever. That's where I keep mine. You just grab a little split and throw it right on top of that fire. The first thing we got to do is heat that wood, okay? And then we got to get it to the point where it is volatile enough that it will catch on fire. Now, rewind the clock just a little bit here. The first thing we've really got to take into consideration, um, which just happened a moment ago when we grabbed that stick of wood off the shelf, you want to make sure that you have, you know, seasoned wood. In other words... You can't just go right out and cut down a tree that's alive, you know, like a green tree. If you do that, what will happen is that wood is alive and it's wet. and It's got all the juices and the resins and all the moisture and stuff in it that's got to basically boil out. It's got to heat up and vaporize and come out of the wood before the wood will catch on fire. So that that's one thing right there. So an ideal moisture set point is somewhere around 8% if you're wanting to get a good smoke in your in your cooker, but that's that's a clean smoke. For instance, if, you know, people used to say soak your wood, I, that does not apply in this situation. You definitely do not want to soak your wood. Anything wet has to completely vaporize and leave the environment in order for the wood to catch on fire. So there we go. You got to have some seasoned wood to begin with. Now, even if that wood that I just grabbed off the shelf was in fact considered seasoned, in other words, it's been sitting out, you know, four to six months. It's, it's not been a log on the ground in one piece for a year, right? That doesn't, that does not season your wood. That wood's just as wet inside as it was the day it got cut down. You have to actually cut the wood into logs and you have to split it into pieces so that the inside of that chunk of wood can can uh, get air around it and that water vapor or that moisture can actually evaporate and come out of the wood. So, you know, like, let's just say that, that what my wood was sitting on the shelf and it's well-seasoned. It's been sitting there split in small, in small splits on the shelf. For, I don't know, four to six months or so, 
that's about 8% moisture, let's say, and I just throw it on the on the coal bed in the firebox. What's going to happen is that wood still has to heat up, but it's got to come up to the temperature it is required for wood to combust. I don't remember what it is. I think it's like 160 degrees. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be completely wrong about that. But that's what we're looking for is we're looking to get that wood up to the temperature it needs to be in order to catch on fire. So it's going to take a little bit for that thing to heat up. In the meantime, it's just going to sit there and smolder because flames are touching the outside of that wood. It's just not enough to light it on fire completely. And the inside is starting to heat up at, at a slower rate as the outside. That's where all that, that white or uh, heavy blue smoke comes from. So a quick way to do this is instead of grabbing a piece of wood off the shelf and throwing it right on the coal bed. Instead of doing that, let's preheat the wood. Now, you can do this a million different ways, but here's the way that I prefer. If I have an uninsulated firebox, I'll set that split right on top of the firebox. What that'll do is I'll just get a direct heat, but no flame on that wood, and it'll cause that wood to preheat without catching on fire. Now, if you've got an insulated firebox, Let's say that you're heavily insulated and for some reason you can't get that wood to preheat fast enough, like within 30 minutes, it's not ready to put on the fire. Then what you can do is set it inside the cook chamber. I've done that quite a bit. I'll just set that split in the cook chamber off to the side away from my meat and let that thing in that warm environment in the pit come up to tip slowly as I'm waiting on it to put another split on. And I usually have two to three splits heating up at the same time. That way, especially if I'm on a bigger pit, that way I can, you know, I could quickly add wood if I need to. Now, another place you can do this is on some of the insulated pits. They sometimes perform better if your fire is off to one side or the other. In other words, your primary coal bed is off to the left side inside the firebox. Then you've got the right side that doesn't have a coal bed on it. So what a lot of competition guys will do is that you'll see them burning their fire this way all the time. What a lot of competition guys will do is they'll set that split and they'll use smaller splits and they'll set it off to the opposite side inside the firebox and let that thing heat up directly from the radiant heat off of that fire. Now, that's a really good trick and I have done that at other pits myself, but it, it's a little, I mean, your, your wood can catch on fire just sitting there, right? Now, if you preheat that wood before you set it on the coal bed, you'll have less of that white smoke, heavy blue smoke when you add a stick. And uh, you'll have a much better experience that way. And your wood will light much faster. Um, One other thing you can do if you still have issues, depending on what kind of wood you're using, like for instance, red oak. Red oak is essentially very, very, very wet. Um, it, I don't know what it is about red oak. Some of you forester guys brought might know, but that wood is just really wet, and it takes a long time for that moisture to come out of it uh, naturally like that. So you got to preheat it longer. So if you're struggling still to get that wood dry enough, what you could do is actually just add a little bit of like some of these char logs. Uh, for instance, B and B charcoal has a. Uh, it's like a, almost like a briquette. But it's a cylinder-shaped tube that's got a hole through the middle of it. And when I cooked a hog recently up at the American Royal, and uh, the guy I was cooking with, Will Cleaver, he wanted it to be super clean smoke. And uh, the splits we had to burn uh, were, you know, they were out of a bag. They were really good stuff, but they were a little bigger than I like. I like them about half that size. So instead of just adding another split, on the fire like that, we would throw in three or four of those little char logs. The reason I like those things is because they are a processed piece of charcoal that's super, super, super dense and super dry. And it's got a hole through the middle of it, which makes it light really quick. And you get a super clean smoke off of that. So you don't want to put a pile of those in, but you might set one or two, maybe three pieces across your coal bed you know, evenly spaced with some gaps between them so they could catch on fire quick. And uh, that'll keep your coal bed going, which is where the heat source comes from, which will help to get that wood on fire quickly um, and heat it, preheat it. 
So anyway, guys, I hope that helps. This will work on any pin. You could even do the same process on like a vertical uh, vertical cabinet smoker. For instance, like a uh, direct fired smoker that's got like a charcoal basket under it. I got to slow down here just a little bit. Johnny Law's over there. I got to be careful. Yeah, they, they stay put. No biggie. Anyway, so what you got, what you can do is like on any smoker that you burn charcoal, but you throw wood on it, like wood chunks, for instance. You're not using big old splits. You're probably using something like a, a fist sized chunk or something like that. You can do this exact same process on there. You can throw a split or a chunk in the in the side of the firebox there to preheat it you can put it up in the cook chamber if you want you can actually put it under the fire off to the side of your charcoal basket out of the pile of ash even i've done that before and uh you could preheat your wood that way um for grind out loud you could actually even just use your oven in the house <laughs> if you had to um i've never done that but i was just sitting there thinking we're just trying to heat the wood up was all we're doing so uh, we could pre-light it really quick. Uh, anyway, hope that helps. If you found this helpful, please share this episode with your friends, especially if you are cook- got buddies that cook on cheap offsets from like box stores and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, fire management, I think, is one of the things that is the biggest deal to overcome for a lot of guys that got into barbecue using pellet smokers and things like that. You know, just that letting go of that electronic control and getting to the point where you can manage a fire is the funnest part in my opinion of barbecue learning how to get that fire going and run it and and have confidence that you can cook on anything um you'll learn quite a lot and i do i do encourage that so share this with your buddies that may be in that situation and uh you know If you're trying to figure out whether or not your next smoker, you need to build it yourself, or if you want it built for you, I'm here to help you. You can go over to smokerbuilder.com, and on that website, it's just going to simply ask you that question. How do you want to get your next smoker? Do you want to build it yourself, or do you want me to build it for you, or do you need help deciding? And there's three ways I can help you there. If you want me to build it for you, I'd be more than happy to do that, and uh Let's get you into your next smoker. So smokerbuilder.com is where you get started on your journey into the barbecue world. So until uh, next time, keep your smoke thin and blue. I appreciate all you guys listening and watching and all that stuff and sharing this with your friends. Have a great day. See you.